Hi, uh, so this is the last and final notebook for this data science tutorial. And this is actually one of my favorite notebooks just because I really like visualization and, um, and there's really some really interesting things we find out in this data here in this notebook. So uh, let's see what we're going to do. So first of all, let me say that I try and pick, uh, I think we do four or five uh, visualizations here. And the goal is to hopefully give you all the tools that will be necessary for building your own uh, cool visualization for your own data science project. Uh, quick things I will do here is I will use the um, um, plots.jl package with the uh, GR back end, but there was an issue with like always giving me a, a warning about something. So I think I looked it up and found out that the solution is just to set up this thing before we get started. So I'm just going to do it again here. Uh, another thing we're going to use throughout this uh, notebook is mapping uh, state names to state um, uh, codes. And I just built a dictionary here. That's pretty easy. Like all I have to do is just do state abbreviation of Alaska and it's just going to give me what uh, that thing is. So that's, that's, a, that's another example where you could use a dictionary and it's pretty uh, more convenient way um, than using a matrix because everything is indexed by um, state name. So here is that. And then the two main packages we're actually going to use here are plots and stats, stats plots. And the GR backend is going to be the backend we're using. Um, so yeah, we're going to use other packages such as statistics, stats base, and ML base. And um, another thing that we will use throughout this tutorial is there's an issue with plotting that essentially if you go to this issue, you will see that it hasn't been fixed up till like currently. So I have a hack to fix it. And that is uh, what, what happens is if you have X tick labels and one of them is kind of too long, like it doesn't know what to do, it kind of cuts, uh, cuts off. And to avoid this, I have um, come up with a way to um, basically tag along, like I add an empty plot here. And um, once I add this empty plot and I set a layout with like super high uh, height here and like very small height here, uh, this uh, turns out to work out fine. So um, sometimes we're going to have to use X labels that are longer a little bit and um, it's not going to look great. And a way to fix it is via just tagging along um, an empty plot. Um, this shouldn't be the way, like it should, it should work normally. And there's an issue about it on GitHub, obviously, but um, uh, this is just a current like hack to work around it. Okay, so moving on, the data we will use here is this data from uh, the Zillow data that we've seen before, except that now we're going to work with the prices data. We haven't worked in this data with this data specifically yet. So uh, that's something we want to, um, that's, that's a new territory to explore. Let me actually see if I already have it here. I'm always like kind of worried about calling XLSX dot. Yeah, sometimes it's like a really big data set and can take longer and I'm trying to optimize time here. So I'll keep it as it is. And let me see, I already have states, I think. Perfect. Uh, let me just call states again. All right, perfect. Um, so here, what I will do with this data is I will first create a data frame uh, for um, New York, uh, which is going to be this just uh, so again, these there are multiple region names and for each re region name, there's a state name. Uh, so I'm just going to get um, a state name and get all the regions in that state name. So that's the New York uh, data frame. Uh, California data frame, super similar. Um, Florida data frame, also similar. So that's how we're doing it. So here you're going to see the last data frame we've just created, and that's the Florida data frame, and you'll see all the state names are Florida. So that's what we would expect. All right, so moving on to the first plot we are going to do here is a symmetric violin plot. So the first thing I'm interested to see here is the price distribution uh, difference between these three states that I'm interested in, let's say. Uh, New York, California, and Florida. And uh, if I do just a violin plot based on uh, the prices from 2020, uh, February of 2020, um, I can just call a violin plot on all these uh, three things and see the distribution. Um, so one thing I can immediately see is that, uh, first of all, California has a lot 
more higher prices, but like the median is somewhere here and Florida has a lower median. So that's a quick observation. Uh, but one concept I really like that I've learned actually from one of Edward Tofty's books is like when, when plots are symmetric, then like there's really, you're losing space by showing just, um, just b basically both of them symmetric from both sides. So I, I wanted to explore how can I do violin plots in Julia um, in a symmet like in a non-symmetric way, in a sense, I want to show something on the right side and something on the left side. And it turns out it's pretty easy to do that in Julia. You just have to set the right and left um, handles. So here I'm plotting, um, instead of just doing the 2020 data, I'm using 2020 and 2010. So February of 2020 and February of 2010. Uh, here is the right-hand side, and then here is the left-hand side over here. Uh, so let me run this. And as you will see, actually, that was pretty cool to see from my perspective, because what happened here is, um, first of all, the right hand side are the 2020 and the left hand side are the 2010 and we'll label them in just a second. Uh, but what's going on here is that almost the same distribution is occurring from 2010 to 2013, except that it's sorry, from 2010 to 2020, and then, except that it's kind of just going a little higher. And that was pretty cool to observe. Like it's almost the same distribution, but just going higher. Uh, so now the next thing is, well, obviously like this is not a great plot. We're just gonna try and make it a little more pretty by labeling it and coloring it. We don't need that many colors. We just need two colors really. Um, and this is the way we'll do it. Uh, we will set a specific nut color for each of these things and a specific color for each of these things. We don't need a label for these two things since we're labeling things by color here. We're just gonna label the first item and uh, not giving a label for the other things will just not show it. Uh, so we do want a legend. And that's why we do have to state that the label is um, um, uh, empty. So I actually, if I don't set a label here, it's gonna mess things up. Yeah, it's just gonna say like some random label here, but I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna set it to, um, um, empty label, which will not show. And then finally, I'm just going to do annotations on this um, um, plot. And annotations are pretty cool to see because sometimes um, you just like you look at this plot and you're like, you don't know where um, a certain um, like, like how different are the medians, like you don't want to just keep looking at the x axis or the y axis. And um, I think this is like, this is one beneficial information to look at when you're looking at a violin plot. So uh, this is how we're going to do annotations. Annotations will take as X axis, uh, sorry, as uh, the first input is the X and Y uh, locations and the location we're able to get it just from the median value. So we're able to find the median value. So that's the Y value. And then the X value is really, I think this starts at 0 0.5, 1.5 and uh, 2.5 so it's pretty easy to find these numbers and just um, give them as x values i do have just like an epsilon kind of change just so, so that it's like not overlapping with this line i think here so that's just for that purpose okay so i've already ran this i think Let's see if this why is this not working uh cam prices um All right, I don't think this should work anyway. So this is some wrong, some, it should be here. Um, yeah, so the next thing is we're just gonna put it on both sides of, uh, yeah. And then I'm adding another state here. So you can add uh, whichever, I think I just tried and formalized it here by adding uh, just a vector of the states of interest. So you can have more states of interest. Uh, you can only have two years of interest just because it's really every violin plot will have two uh, sides of it only. Uh, but you can increase or have more states of interest to plot here. Uh, so you can have also other states. So like if I call uh, Ohio, see what that's going to look like. Uh, yeah, so that's what you want to see. Uh, you can hopefully add other states too. So if I add Idaho, perfect. Yeah, so this is how to play around with this code. Really, this part here is just putting together everything we've seen uh, earlier. All right, the second plot we're going to work on is going to be a bar plot or a histogram type of plot, and we're going to see how you can make insets in Julia. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm labeling or I'm, I'm coming up with um, the number um, 
uh, the number of times a state appeared in this data. Uh, so let's compare the states based on the number of location entries. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing I'm doing is, first of all, I'm mapping them. We've done this process more than once so far in this uh, tutorial. And I'm mapping the state ID, like actually like California to a number and like New York to a number. And so I'm mapping them here and histogramming them here. And then the N bins, I'm deciding its exact number in this case. So one quick issue with this plot is, first of all, uh, I like I personally think when you see a bar plot, like if it's not giving so much information, like I'd rather see the numbers. And one quick information I would want to see here, and it would be very easy for the visualizer to show me, is uh, the sorting of these states. Like I don't want to like I, I I much rather see the numbers than see just bars here. Uh, so a quick fix to this is to just sort everything. So I'm sorting them here. Um, one way to get um, the actual content of how many numbers a state was found is by fitting into a histogram. So here, age is going to be the fit, like if you want to get the values of each histogram. And once you've got age, um, the value of each histogram is just going to be in this value age dot weights. And now I'm just sorting them in the reverse order. I want to be the highest be the first. And then since I already have the numbers themselves, I don't need a bar chart anymore. Actually, I, I don't need a histogram chart. I need a bar chart. And that's because I already know the weights. I'm just going to pass the weights in this new sorted IDs uh, fashion. OK, great. So the next thing we will do is uh, to, um, that's another thing that may come up for you, where you want to rotate the plot. You want the x-axis to be the y-axis and the y-axis to be the x-axis, essentially. And so this can be done by changing the orientation to a horizontal. And here, I'm just going to do the same bar plot we saw earlier, except that uh, the orientation is horizontal. Uh, oh, I've al also used y flip is equal to true just because I wanted, um, I don't want to go from 0 to 50. I wanted to go from 0 to 50 in the other way direction. Uh, so I wanted the top uh, state to be on the top. I could have also sorted them in the opposite order and passed them, and we didn't need to have Y-flip. Either or would work. OK, so next thing is um, to make bar plots really interesting. I think um, I, I don't necessarily like bar plots, but like if, if there's not a lot, again, if there's not a lot of information you can show me from a bar plot, I'd rather see the numbers. But here I'm trying to like include as many numbers or as many pieces of information uh, as could be helpful. Uh, so one thing here is I don't want to go back and look at each state, like what is going on with, e with each state uh, or like the ID number or anything like that. So one quick way to fix this is to actually annotate each of these bar plots. And here I'm just annotating, I think, the top, like just one through three. And that's just a quick way to do it. And next, I'm just going to annotate everything. And another thing I'm going to fix here is uh, removing the boundaries of these boxes. Uh, so a bar chart here uh, will, oh, this is where I'm actually using the state abbreviation. So I'm uh, using that dictionary that I declared in the very beginning of the notebook here. Uh, so this is how I'm, instead of going up till three, I'm just going on until all the state annotations. And this is how I'm plotting it here. Finally, just because a lot of times, like I think if it's just one thing that we're plotting and color doesn't really matter that much, um, you can, I think, changing the color to some neutral color like gray uh, would probably be uh, best here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and do that here. Um, all right, so we've changed the color plots to gray. Another thing I've added here is these um, block, like lines of white color. That way you can have an idea of how much bigger is one state over than another state. Uh, so like if something has two of these bars, like, you know, it's like more than 40 and if it has more, like you can immediately um, get an idea of what these numbers are. And this is an idea discussed in um, uh, Edward Tufte's, uh, one of Edward Tufte's books uh, where um, you want to add a new dimension essentially to your uh, bar charts or histograms. Um, finally, here is a... Um, uh, just putting everything together in this plot and uh, what I'm doing here is just adding an inset to that figure and the inset is going to be just a zoom in on everything that had less than 20 uh, listings 
And um, the reason I'm doing this is because like you can't really tell how different are these final few states here from like maybe this state here. Uh, so you can tell, you, ha you can have a better idea by kind of zooming in on uh, the inset here. And the way you, you're doing it is just by adding, uh, creating a new plot and deciding where the inset with a bounding box is going to uh, be located. I think this is the x, y coordinate of the corner, and then this is um, of the lower left corner, and then this is uh, the height and width uh, of, uh, sorry, this is the height and this is the width of where uh, the box is going to be located. And then f of 2 is really what you want to populate, and this is what you're populating here. Um, and with that, we will, that's the end of this second plot. Okay, so moving on, uh, the next plot we're going to work with is going to be a plot with error bars. And here, what we're doing is we're plotting, so we're trying to get all the data from uh, a certain state and um, um, for from, from a all the set of different regions from that state. And we want to plot all the prices from those different regions in the state. So here, I'm just going to get um, one of the states. Uh, so what I'm doing here, let me actually execute this. So this is, I'm getting the New York uh, data frame here. So this is an M. And then um, every row here is really just the interval from like, I think 2008, March 2008, up until February 2020. Uh, so each of these are really just a monthly date, and each of the rows are a subregion or a region in New York. Uh, so the x tick labels are, yeah, March 2008 up until February 2020. And now we're going to plot everything here. Uh, so for each region, as you will see, these are the prices. Now. Each of these plots is not really indicative of what's going on. Uh, one way to understand what's going on on a uh, state level is to combine all of them and just like get a median and get an error bar of uh, how, to, how what is the variation of the prices. One way we can do it is by finding uh, writing this find percentile function, where every time we pass a set of numbers, it can get the median and the 80th or whatever percentile we're asking it for and uh, returning them to us. And so here we're going to call it on uh, this same data we have here, the M data. And um, 0 0.5 is the median, 0 0.8 is the uh, 80th percentile and 20th percentile. And the way we're going to plot it is just by calling, we're, what we're really pl plotting here is the median but then we're adding a ribbon to it. And then what the ribbon is just going to be the difference between, uh, so the maximum, uh, the minimum uh, side of the ribbon is going to be the median minus minimum because it doesn't take the actual minimum. It does take the variation from median to the minimum. And then uh, the upper limit is going to be the maximum that we just found minus the median value. And then we're deciding on the color. Um, also, like one thing you would have probably noticed by now is that colors have number like color number one is blue, color number two is orange, color number three is, uh, three is green. Uh, so these are just sta standard colors uh, you can use while you're plotting um, in Julia, or you can use other like you can decide it's blue. Um, and so, okay, so here uh, we are going to label this with New York and we are just going to do a few different things like setting the grid to be false and um, adding the X-tick labels and then using this trick that we've uh, discovered earlier about um, the um, um, padding from below. All right, so this was New York. Uh, how do we do it for every state? So in this function, I just put everything together. So all you have to do is um, pass the plot ID, uh, the state value, and the color ID. Uh, the state value is just going to um, go and find the current IDs from uh, the original uh, data frame. Uh, so states uh, equal to state value. And um, if you notice here, we have an exclamation mark at the end here. And that means that something passed to this function is going to be modified. And what really will be modified is this plot ID, because we're going to keep adding on top of this plot ID. So we're just going to define this function. And now we're going to define a plot ID that's just going to be a plot uh, that's just going to define the canvas where we're plotting. And then we're going to start to add um, 
states to it. So here I'm going to add three states. You can add different kinds of state. Like you can add California also. Like you can see California is so much bigger than all of these three states. But one really interesting thing I really thought was cool and interesting here is, um, first of all, Idaho seems to be following a similar pattern, just like California. And if I compare Idaho to states like Ohio and Indiana, we will see that um, Ohio and Indiana seem to be very similar, except that Idaho is just like it, it dipped here, but it's going much like it's going bigger than um, the, the price are going bigger than Indiana and Ohio. So I thought that was interesting. All right. So moving on. Um, this plot here, we will do a double axis plot. So sometimes you want to compare two things together on the same plot. So here, just a quick idea of how this will work. You just want to pass the vector um, that you're plotting as the first, uh, the left hand side um, axis. Uh, and um, the other side is going to be just labeled with twin x um, parenthesis, uh, so twin x uh, function. And then you're going to pass the vector too. So this is just a quick toy example of how this will work out. And for here, the two dimensions of things that we will plot are going to be um, the New York. Uh, we're going to use the New York frame. And we are going to use um, a piece of information that we haven't used before, and that is the rank of the regions. So if I uh, execute this, um, so what's going to happen here is um, I'm calling, so here is the, uh, let's see. Um, so these are the percentiles of the prices in New York. Um, all right, so here it is. So the size or uh, the size rank is um, the rank of each of these um, uh, each of these regions. So, okay, so here's what, what's happening. So we're taking for each, um, um, for each um, region in New York, we are taking the prices over all the years. So we're taking the prices over all the years. Um, let's see. So this, this is the M matrix. And we're finding the percentile over the year. So we're transposing that. Okay. So for each um, region ID, we're finding the, the, the difference of prices over all the years. And then what we're doing, so we're, we're passing the transpose. So now the percentiles is um, per the regions. And what we're doing next is plotting uh, the percentiles per region. And we're plotting as a y-axis on the uh, right-hand side, uh, we're plotting um, the rank of these regions. So some pattern shows up here. And that is that when the prices are higher, like this is kind of an interesting point. I don't, I'm not sure why it's that way. Uh, but when the prices are higher, it's a lower rank. And when the prices are lower, it's a higher rank. Uh, so that's one piece of information that I was able to deduce out of this plot. But I'm not sure exactly what that indicates. So if you have any information or you can play around more with the data and find out what's going on, uh, that's a pretty cool observation or a cool, cool path to try and find out what's going on uh, there specifically. All right, so finally, we will finish with this uh, plot here, which is essentially just a way to tell you that uh, two dimensional does not need to be two dimensional, you can uh, use a third dimension on it, like color is a third dimension, uh, size of third dimension. Uh, these are things you can add to your 2D plot without um, uh, changing it and moving it to a three dimensions, which could be um, sometimes uh, challenging to kind of rotate around and look, look at. Uh, you could just still have a two-dimensional plot by using color. So what we will plot here is um, prices differences from 2020 to 2010. We're using California data frame here. Uh, so you will see the price differences uh, from, yeah, from February of 2020 and February of 2010. And there's obviously like a quick, like you can immediately see there's a linear kind of uh, mapping between uh, the prices here uh, based on region, right? Like each of these dots is really a region. Um, and that was its price in uh, its median price in 2010. And that was its median price in 2020. Uh, but also here, let's say that the third dimension we're trying to add is um, 
the, the rank of this uh, region. So very similar to what we did here in terms of rank, uh, we are going to use that as a third dimension for the rank here. Uh, so one thing, first of all, before moving on, just making the plot look more uh, visually appealing, we're going to keep the x and y axis the same, removing the uh, legend uh, and uh, making the marker stroke width smaller um, or like it, there's no marker stroke width, marker size smaller. And then the alpha of um, the transparency of uh, the light, the color uh, we're using is 0.6. And then we're also removing the grid. So the cool thing here is that you can work with the color schemes package where you can create your own um, color scheme. So like basically, well, you can create your own mapping from numbers to colors. So here I'm just going to use the color schemes that autumn one um, color scheme. There's so many others. So like if you go to the page of color schemes uh, uh, online, you will find out there's other um, uh, templates you can use to map your colors. And finally, what I'm going to do here is once I've taken the ranks, I'm going to map them to colors based on this color scheme. Now, this is going to be my new colors vector. So this is the colors vector where I'm going to store everything. And now for every uh, value of continuous rank, I'm going to map it to a colors vector. And finally, instead of uh, plotting everything with just one color, I'm just going to plot them in um, these colors that I just uh, mapped. And another thing shows up here is actually, let me let me move on to the next plot and, and we'll be able to see that how it shows up uh, clearly uh, in the next plot. The next thing is like still here, I don't know, like was yellow high and red small? Like I don't remember. So how do I add that as, a, uh, as, as an additional information to my figure? Uh, so what I'm going to do here is a quick way to um, add basically a heat map, but a heat map that I'm going to create based on the numbers that I care about, which are uh, the ranks in this case. Uh, so here's a quick way to do it. What I'm doing here is like really just plotting all the ranges from um, zero to all the other all the other ranks that could have existed here that I mapped to through this color scheme. And I'm going to annotate them. I'm going to put a number in the middle of all of them. Uh, so now I've created this kind of my own mapping of things. And finally, all I have to do is just append it to the previous uh, plot. So one way to do it, or the way to do it here is to call this app layout macro where you set up your layout, how it's going to be like 0 0.89 of the height and then 0 0.1 of the height. And the semicolon is saying like kind of it's the next line. Uh, so here I'm going to pass now all, each of these plots has been given a name. So this was plot P2 and this was uh, P1. So I'm going to pass P1 comma P2. It'll know that P1 is the first plot, P2 is the second plot, and then layout is my layout that I just declared over here. And now uh, we will see, let's see. Yeah, now we will see that, um, again, the same pattern, similar pattern that I saw in New York here where uh, prices were higher, it had a lower rank. Uh, we will see here that prices were higher, it had a lower rank, and prices were lower, it had a higher rank. So I'm observing almost the same phenomenon here, uh, just from a different perspective and on a different uh, data set, uh, just the California data. And with that, I hope that this final notebook was helpful to tell you that there are other things or a lot of uh, wide variety of things you can do with plotting and Julia to uh, get uh, visually appealing plots and uh, try to make the most out of your plot by putting in a lot of information in it and make it uh, informative enough for your uh, viewer to view. And with that, I will actually end this tutorial entirely. And thank you so much for staying with me and taking this tutorial. I had a really fun time actually coming up with all these examples and all these data sets and problems on them. So I really hope you've enjoyed them as much as I did. Um, and yeah, with that, if you do have any questions, uh, please, please feel free to find me online, um, Twitter, um, email or anything like that. I'm happy to uh, answer questions. Um, thank you.